Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a whole bunch of plants. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six plants I need to get repotted. Some of these have needed to be repotted for like a long, long time. Namely these two right here. Quick side note, I am having some weird left shoulder pain. It's just kind of like radiating here and all down my arm. I can't lift past this point, so yeah, I couldn't do my hair today, which is why we're rocking a hat. Oh no, I shouldn't have taken that off. <laughs> I am really excited to get these repotted because like I said, they've been eating it for a long time and these are some of the last plants on my list that need to be up potted for spring. So that's really exciting to kind of be a little bit of head, ahead of schedule for once in my life <laughs> in the plant care department. Let me just move all of these off camera because I need to set up my workstation. Oh. We're gonna start with the Thanksgiving cactus, Schlumbergera truncata. Mine is blooming, it's a little bit confused, but I'm also going to put some of this tiger balm on my arm really quick because it's kind of bothering me. Even just from moving these little, like not heavy things around, it's so weird. Oh my gosh, and it like radiates through my whole arm. What is going on? Wow, the mountains are beautiful. It just snowed up there. Yeah, let's get started. Let me tell you a little bit about this plant. So this is a Schlumbergera truncata or Thanksgiving cactus. Um, it's called, nicknamed a Thanksgiving cactus because these typically bloom around Thanksgiving time. But mine is a little bit confused. It, um, it's dropped a few of them, but it did have a whole bunch of blooms on this side. There's a little tiny bud right there. What is going on? I don't know, but I'm quite pleased with it. I do keep this in pretty high light, which is why mine is pretty sun stressed. I'm really excited to get this repotted. I've had it in here. There's, there's some slight rootage coming out of the bottom, but it is drying out really quickly. And I did have this in a cover pot and I still am having a hard time keeping it, keeping it watered. The planter I'm going to be potting it up in is this black one, which is chipping a little bit, but where the stems of this kind of hang down, it's gonna hide a lot of that, so I'm not too worried about it. I previously had my Syngonium white butterfly in this. I love this pot. I'm not just gonna throw it out because it's chipping, so yeah, I think this will be a cute, what do you think? You tell me what you think. A cute little combo, right? And then when, when this blooms with the hot pink blooms, they're gonna stand out so much. So yeah, I think this will be a good planter plant combo, hopefully. First things first, I guess I need to unpot this. Really interested to see what the roots look like. Oh my gosh. I have been doing this plant so dirty. <laughs> How often do I say that in a repot? Wow. Um, I also have a bunch of leaves, a bunch of the bracts that have rooted. So I'm gonna go ahead and pot those up, but I'm gonna pull them off for now so I don't have to worry about destroying them. Okay, that is some serious, serious rootage. Right, what the heck? Here's the thing, when I depot a plant and the root ball, root ball comes out like this, I'm both horrified and also very satisfied. Something about this is so satisfying to me, although I know it's probably not great for the plant. Just goes to show, like, you don't need to be re Honestly, maybe this is like terrible advice. <laughs> don't worry about repotting your plants every season or every year, even. I don't know. Do you guys agree with that statement or disagree? There's a little caveat to that. As long as you're able to keep up with the watering, don't worry about repotting it every year. That's all it is. If it's in a smaller pot, you just need to water it more frequently and make sure that you're keeping up with like feeding the plant, the plant nutrition. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna break these up a little bit, not too much. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and Something I've been doing for my plants is, um, especially in non-porous planters like this, I've been adding a little layer of horticultural charcoal to the bottom. 
so that if for whatever reason I like overwater the plant or it's not draining out fast enough because this does have a very, very small drainage hole, any water that pools at the bottom, the charcoal will make sure it doesn't mold, which if you get mold and stuff like that, that's how, yeah, you know, it just leads to issues in the plant. So yeah, just a very small layer of horticultural charcoal. Fill this up about halfway, maybe a little bit less than halfway with my potting mix, which I've talked about in so many videos on my channel lately, so I'm not going to get too redundant with it, but I do mix it myself and pretty much always have it linked down in the description if you wanna see what additives I'm using in my potting mix. You totally don't have to mix your own. It is definitely more expensive, but I just prefer to do it because I think it looks prettier. And I like a very, very well draining mix, so it's easy for me to mix that up myself. Yeah, I'm just going to backfill. So this plant I got from my mama. It was a cutting from her plant, and it's really cool because my grandma also got a cutting from the same plant, and hers got massive. My sister Morgan inherited it after she passed, but it is just, it's so big. It's kind of crazy that we all three have plants from the same plant. This is hard because I, I really didn't realize how much I use my left arm for, and like, even the smallest little shoulder movement keeps tweaking it. The thing is though, I'm not a doctor goer. Like I went to every appointment when I was pregnant, but before that I hadn't gone to the doctor since college when I had to get my <laughs> physicals for playing soccer. Yeah, I just don't go to the doctor. I didn't go to the dentist for 10 years. I know it's crazy. I don't know, I'm just not a doctor goer. So I'm like, I'll just tough it out. And if it becomes something unbearable, then I'll go to the doctor, which, Again, don't follow, don't follow my advice. That is terrible, that's not even advice. I'm like advising against that. I'm just really, my parents just never really took us to the doctor growing up or the dentist. We went like a few times, but I don't know. I just wasn't raised to go. So now it gives me major anxiety. I do go for my six month checkup to the dentist now, um, but I still do not go to the doctor. And I will not go to the doctor unless I'm having a heart attack <laughs> or something like that. I'm like, let me just drink some green tea, some ginger tea, and my body will heal itself. Let me go lay in the sun and get some vitamin D and my body will heal itself. I just have a weird phobia of the doctor. I really, really do. And it's also so freaking expensive, even with insurance, what the hell? I've been needing glasses for a really, really long time and I'm gonna get glasses soon. Okay, I'm getting off on all sorts of tangents. This is about my plants. Not about me and my doctor habits. Cute. Oh, I feel so much better already. I know this plant is gonna be so much happier because over here, there is this weird kind of yellowing branch and that's because the plant was getting so dry, especially for the amount of light I give this plant. That's a clear sign to me that I wasn't able to keep up with the watering. So I think it'll be a lot happier now where this planter is bigger, it's gonna be able to hold a lot more water than that tiny little terracotta did, and it's not porous. This is a good move. This plant is gonna pop off this spring. I can just feel it. I need to backfill a little bit. thing about the potting mix I use is that it is very, very like spongy. So when I repot a plant like this, it has a hard time. The potting mix has a hard time holding the plant in place. So when I do water the plants after they've been potted, I kind of have to, I, I usually have to backfill a little bit even more than what you see on camera because I normally don't water them on camera. Maybe we will today. Maybe we'll take them to the bathtub and do it together. But yeah, just something to <laughs> be aware of. It doesn't hold the plant in place super well until it's been watered. And then it kind of like settles down and fills in all the air pockets it needs to. Um, everything just looks so much better. Okay, so I do have these little tiny bracts. Let me bring them closer so you can see. You can pull these little bracts off the plant. 
um, put them in some water or moss or even soil because that's how these were growing and they will root and then it'll form a new plant. And the new plant will come out from right here at the tip, the other end opposite of the roots. Yeah, it's really cool, really easy to propagate. But for now, just stick these in so that all the roots are covered. Yeah, so cute. And we will stick it into the little stand. Ah, oh, I love it, that's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside and like I said, we'll water all these together at the very end. Very happy with that, that change. I think it'll be really good for the plant. This one I've just been putting off and putting off because, okay, well first, this is a Syndapsis Silver Hero and I have it in a terracotta just sitting in this spherical vase of water and obviously the water is so disgusting. So I'm gonna go clean this out. Let me go dump it outside actually. It has rained, snowed, and hailed all in one day. So I don't know what's going on. Utah is weird. Yeah, you can see it's still like coated, kind of disgusting. Eee? Do you go outside, Biz? Good boy. So I just cleaned this out. I'm gonna set it aside for a minute, but that is the vessel I'm going to be potting this plant back into. And I'm actually going to cut this vine up because I don't know, I just don't love how long it is. So I'm gonna take my nails and just pinch the stem because I don't know where my scissors are. Set all the cuts aside. Oh, I forgot a bract. Let's fix that. Just pinch it with my nails. <clears throat> Each individual little node. Yes, it's better if you can get a clean cut, but like I said, I have no idea where my scissors went. So nails it is. Perks of having gel and growing long nails, eh? It is a full-time job as a nail, or a, not a nail. I'm also a nail hobbyist, but as a plant hobbyist, it's a full-time, oh! See, like, even that little movement tweaked my whole arm. That was so, it's so weird. As a plant hobbyist, it is a full-time job to keep these long nails nice, but I will say, these long nails can really cut through some thick-ass stems pretty easily. So, I don't know. We'll see how long they last though. I need to redo them. Ah. I'm gonna have to wash my hands after this because I'm getting Syndapsis Silver Hero goop underneath my nails. That's kind of gross. <laughs> Oops! Can't help it, I'm just nasty, I guess. Oops. Oh, that's okay. That's very dramatic. Okay, unpot the main plant out of here, which these roots look awesome. This was just a little cutting I threw into this planter and it has rooted phenomenally. So, I mean, okay, I don't even have to say it. Like you can see it rooted pretty well. It's been in there for, I would say since last fall. So maybe six months, maybe eight months ish, but it has grown quite a bit. And I love the like terracotta inside of a vase kind of situation like this. Although I didn't clean this out enough, so it kind of bothered me and I know myself, I'm not going to keep it clean. So instead of having to worry about that, I'm going to pot all of these back into here so that it can hold water really well. Um, again, adding my layer of horticultural charcoal to the bottom to help with like mold, Bact weird bacteria stuff. It'll just keep it a lot more clean. Fill it up. About halfway. Another reason I do my own potting mix is I love when it's super chunky like this. And I love the fact that I'm going to be able to see the chunky little pieces in this clear vessel and it'll be extra cool when the roots really fill this out and I can like kind of see them. It's like, it's like an ant farm, you know, those things you get when you're a kid and you can like watch the ants burrow around. It's like that, but with plant roots. 
So fun. Okay, let me bring you in closer so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. This taller plant I'm going to situate into the back. Fill it in just enough that the plant will hold without me having to sit here and hold it while I do other things. Okay. Ooh, it's a bit top heavy. That's fine. That's fine, we'll fix it in a minute. Oh, that's actually fine. Um, and then I'm gonna go in and pop all of my cuttings in. I'm gonna take one more off of this. And then yeah, just same with the rest of these little cuts. Let me add a little more soil up front there. The other thing about a really chunky mix like this is you really end up with a lot less root rot issues. Um, even in planters without drainage holes, which you guys probably already know, like I feel passionate about the fact that plants don't, planters don't necessarily need to have drainage as long as you're willing to like adjust a little bit what you're doing. Um, just a little bit, but the reason it helps a lot having a chunky mix like this in a planter with no drainage is there's a lot more airflow and like air pockets. So looking really closely, you can see there's quite a bit of air pockets um, around the roots of the plants, which is good for not allowing like mold or um, I don't know. It allows, it, it allows for even oxygen flow all around the roots, which is what you need to avoid root rot at the end of the day. Fill it back in, and even though I zoomed you in really close, you kinda can't even see what I'm doing because these leaves are so big. Let me turn it backwards, I guess. Oh yeah, you can see that side a lot better. Um, I'm gonna kinda use my finger to push the substrate down. I'm not compacting it a lot, like too much. It's hard to say what too much is, but I do definitely want to fill in any giant air pockets. Uh, yeah. Cute, looks good. I'm gonna try and situate this in here a little bit better just so it sits a little bit less awkward, but I'm sure, I don't know actually, how many of you guys are here as like beginner plant keepers? Who of you are here, even though you're experienced, you just like to hang out and repot plants with me? <laughs> I've been wondering what the like beginner to not beginner ratio of my subscribers is, so I would really appreciate it if you let me know. Most of you probably know, already know how plants can look a little bit awkward when you've freshly repotted them and then it just kind of takes some time for them to grow into their spot a little bit and look a little less wonky. I mean, this actually isn't too bad, but yeah, it's definitely a little bit wonky and it will over time look a lot less wonky. So let me set this aside and we will move on to our next plant, which I don't have a planter for. You know what, actually we'll do this one next because I do know what I want this one to be in. I know I've mentioned time and time again how hard of a time I have <laughs> picking planters for my plants, which is like probably 80% of the reason I wait so long to repot them. I'm just trying to find the perfect planter for them and I prefer to thrift my planters, which, oh my gosh, that's the perfect segue into this plant because I recently thrifted this. It's actually, it came in a set of two, so I have another one over here that I'll use for something else, but this is a, I'm pretty sure it's a candle holder thing that you like set the candle in and light it and then the wax burns into here as it melts. Um, anyway, I'm gonna use it for this agave. Oh my gosh, my arm. 
<laughs> this Agave Solar Eclipse Titanota. Something like that. Mine is reverting. It's supposed to have variegation on it, and I'm not quite sure why mine's reverting. So if you have any experience with this plant, I would really appreciate I would really appreciate your help with that. But mine has reverted significantly, even though I have it in very, very high light, directly under a grow light. So I don't know. Oh, this is gonna be hard to take out because I have it in this weirdly shaped planter that I actually made, which I love this. It's just a little weird shaped. So let's see if I can rip this out without stabbing myself too hard. Oh yeah. I only broke, I broke minimal amount of roots. There's just a little bit right there that I broke, but looks pretty good. This plant is drying out way too fast. Um, these roots look super, super dry, and that is why I wanna repot this because this planter has lots of drainage. It's very shallow, so it doesn't hold a lot of water to begin with, but then the added drainage on top just hasn't been great. Even though this is a succulent and you would think it likes super dry substrate, it really doesn't. So I just haven't been able to keep up with it, which is why the roots look like this. How dry, I mean, some of the roots look pretty good, but it does definitely look super, super dry. I have been trying to keep up on the watering better lately in preparation to repot it, but I don't think it has actually done much. That is why I'll be putting it into this planter and there's no drainage, but that's okay because we're gonna put, you guessed it, horticultural charcoal at the bottom. Just a little layer so that it like, okay, not a great angle, but so that it kind of coats the bottom a little bit. And then a layer of substrate. I'm gonna kind of nest it so that there's more substrate toward the outside where this planter is kind of like bowl shaped. Um, I want it to fill in more on the sides because it can be kind of hard to backfill on a planter like this that is so bowed, bowed, bowed. Is it bowed or bowed when it's like that? Fill it in a little bit and then like, make a hole in the middle. Let me pull out these big pieces of perlite so that it's a little bit deeper in the middle and filled in along the outside because backfilling this shape of planter is a pain in the booty. Kind of think I wanna pull off these bottom leaves maybe. Well, no, we'll just leave them. They can fall off on their own if they need to. Okay. Yes. Oh shoot, this one's gonna be really hard to backfill. Ow, how many times am I gonna stab myself on this one? I don't know, probably a lot. Maybe I need to go grab a spoon. Yeah, that'll be way smarter. Much better. <laughs> Big brain energy, am I right? <laughs> Some of you haters out there are probably like, nah, you're the dumbest bitch on the whole planet. It's okay. It's okay, I feel that way about some people too. <laughs> Although I don't watch their YouTube channels, so. Yeah, the spoon was a, a big brain move for sure. Let's bounce it. I think I want it to sit. Cute. I love um, potting really uh, like chubby, <laughs> how the agave leaves are kind of chubby, like more compact looking plant. I love potting plant shapes like this into shallow planters. I think it looks so cute how, I don't know, it just perfectly fills it in or something. I think that's so cute. So that is a combination I always know that I will love. But you know what, maybe I'm gonna do a video where I talk about my little potting tips like that. Some different, I don't know, little 
factors that I weigh in before repotting a plant. Maybe I should have done that as I repotted these, but you know what? I was not prepared to talk about that today. <laughs> Didn't think about it enough. That looks so much better. I feel so relieved because I am for sure gonna be able to keep this plant better watered. And that's what I love about succulents is they can handle some terrible plant care and how, example this one, how I wasn't watering enough. If a tropical plant, leafy plant, you know, really any other leafy plant that I'm looking at in my house right now, if any of those plants had roots that looked like that, the plant would not look this good up top. Like all the leaves would die back. It would probably be a little stump with a bunch of dead leaves hanging off. So that's what I appreciate about succulents. You can really royally screw them up for <laughs> however long I screwed this one up, obviously, and it will still be okay. Oh, what? There's something, there's some words carved into the back of this. What? show you that's so weird i didn't notice that before now do you see right there it says moms oh my moms only moms only i don't know but i'm a mom so only for me anyway i am just going to go ahead and pop this back onto my plant shelf here which is where this does live like i said it gets really high light because it's six eight I don't know how deep this is, but like maybe like eight inches away from a grow light. And it also gets ambient light from outside. So really good light. Um, let me change my battery. I think it's time to reapply. The thing is this tiger balm is freaking awesome. I know you can get this everywhere too, but I bought like a whole bunch of it when I was in um, Thailand because they use different ingredients. Did you know that? They use the actual herbs and stuff in Thailand, but the one you can buy in America is different. So yeah, glad I stocked up because it's really helping me right now. This is going to be really weird. Should I clean up a little bit? We are going to do my Ripsalis next, but the problem is I don't have a planter that I really love this in right now. And I do love this saucer with that plant. So where I don't have a, a planter that will fit in here, but also be bigger, bigger for that plant to be potted in, I think I'm gonna do something a little weird, which is pot that directly into here. And we'll see, I may be repotting this in a month or two in my next repot with me, we'll see. Same kind of thing, I just can't keep this watered. I can't. Um, it is a bit of a smaller planter. This plant has been growing in here for quite a long time and I don't know, I just don't love terracotta for my plants. Oh God. Yeah, that is so well rooted. Wow. Oh, oh, I was able to lift. Oh, did you see that shoulder action? <laughs> anyway, those roots actually look phenomenal, but I just think the terracotta was allowing the plant to dry out a little bit too much. So I, I just don't like the terracotta. It just dries out way too fast. And I think for some plants that may be ideal, but I don't know, especially if you have like maybe one or two, two or three plants that you're watering often that, that you wanna water like every day. Um, but for me, it just, no, <laughs> it's just not good. This is actually the weirdest, spongiest little root ball. I hate the substrate that this plant was potted in. I might've used like, I might've even just pulled this out of its nursery pot when I bought it and put it into that terracotta in the substrate it was already in because I don't use peat moss and this is looking and feeling a lot like peat moss. It's like super spongy and when your plants get really root bound like this, it's really hard to break up the peat mossy ball, which you don't, okay, I know there's like a whole thing that you maybe, you don't even maybe need to break up the ball a little bit, but from what I've read and seen and heard and from my own experience, it seems like breaking up the root ball a little bit helps to 
jumpstart the roots system helps to jump jumpstart a very severely root bound plant like this if you break it up so that's what i just prefer to do so i don't know to each their own i guess if it works for you great if it doesn't great no need to argue the problem is i do need to break this up quite a bit because i need it to fit in here this might be a really cool idea we'll see how the plant fares some of these roots are really big and thick and juicy okay now in my little planter i'm gonna Fill it up with my potting mix. Move this spoon. It's probably too much. Oh yeah, I need to break way more off of that. Some of you are probably like, stop, don't rip up those roots so roughly. Ugh, I know, okay, I just, I have to to get it to fit. Yeah, this is going to be a little weird, but I, I don't know. I'm hopeful. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Stay tuned because you'll definitely see updates on this. Now we're going to backfill. Try to pack it in there so the plant is supported emotionally and physically. <laughs> oh my gosh, my arm. It just keeps tweaking. The only thing I can think of that might be causing my arm pain is <laughs> Ryan and I have been watching season two of, well, it's just finished the first three episodes of physical 100 you have to let me know if you watch that but it's such a good show especially if you're somebody that likes like being active I don't know it really motivates me to be active so I have been working out again lately and I did some push-ups which upper body is not my forte I played soccer in college and yeah, we had to lift upper body and stuff, but we definitely more so focused on like core and legs. So my upper body is a little bit weak. Anyway, I did a whole bunch of push-ups so that I could have muscles because, oh my gosh, a shoulder muscle, you guys, a good, well-defined shoulder muscle. So I don't know, I think I might've ruined my shoulder <laughs> by doing push-ups, too many push-ups or something, I don't know. I need to water this one right now. Right, that actually looks kind of cool just not certain if it's going to settle in properly. We'll see. Looks kind of cool actually. Um, I think I'm just going to have to try it out for a little bit and see how it is to keep watered because this is pretty shallow, even compared to the planter I had it in before. This is the saucer this sat in, so I don't know. We'll see. I Maybe that's actually really cool. Another thrifted saucer that I love. Best, one of the best dollars I've ever spent. <laughs> especially for plant supplies. So I'm going to spray this off in the sink because there's soil at the bottom and then I'll put it back in its spot and show you. Alrighty, so next up in this little planter again with no drainage. Wow, majority all but one of these. Have I only done two, three plants so far? I am just yapping and yapping. Anyway, again, another one with no drainage. Only one planter that I've used today has had a drainage hole and it's like the tiniest little drainage hole. Starting off with my charcoal. This is my avocado pit that I have been growing and it's just been sitting on a napkin in this, um, what's this, what are these called? Coaster in a little crystal coaster that someone actually gave Ryan and I for our wedding. I've used these a lot as plant saucers. So 
<laughs> I don't know if that's exactly what the person had in mind when they gifted them to us, but I have gotten so much use out of them. So that was a really cool gift. This has had a little stem growth for gosh, a month and a half, two months now, and not a lot has changed. So I think maybe putting it into actual substrate is going to make a big difference. Hopefully it did recently just pop out a new root, but I do think where that saucer I had it in was so shallow. <sighs> Surprise. Surprise. I don't even need to say it. You guys can guess it at this point. I had a hard time keeping it watered. Putting it in something like this with actual substrate is going to help me keep up on it. And I'm actually going to use the spoon for this. This planter is for sure overkill because there's like the teeniest, tiniest little root on here, but I don't know. I don't know, okay, this is trial and error. The avocado pit thing. Trial and error. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I just follow my heart. <laughs> and my heart says, put it in a planter that is clearly too big for it with no drainage hole. Um, I'm actually, what made me decide to do this is I'm hoping that by putting it in such a big planter with no drainage, with my super chunky mix, um, it'll help keep a little bit of ambient humidity around the plant. And maybe that'll help speed up the growth. I don't know. We'll see. It'd be cool if that worked, right? Okay. Now I'm just going to set this here. Well, maybe I need to take out a little bit more. Put in like one scoop too much. Okay. There we go. Now I'm gonna fill it in all around with, but I'm gonna fill it in with like scoopfuls that don't have big chunky perlite pieces because this does have a narrow neck here and the big chunky pieces just like won't hold moisture enough around the where the root is. So avoiding that if I can, which I can. <laughs> okay. That looks weird, but kind of good. What do you think? <laughs> See that cute little plant there? It's a little bit, there we go. So I'm hoping that this will really work for this plant because like you saw, I kept this top section only full of the finer ingredients I use in my potting mix. So like cocoa coir, sphagnum petals, t smaller pieces of orchid bark, that kind of a thing. And then down here, it's the chunkier mix. So as the roots grow down, they're going to have a lot more airflow down there, but hopefully up here, it helps keep things like a little more watered and a little more humid, like I said. We will see. It's all just experiments and that's kind of the fun thing. <laughs> like it keeps me as a stay at home mom. It keeps me entertained through the day really. Like, I don't know, doing these little, checking on my little planty experiments, seeing what different little things I can try for better growth. We will see. Hey, this one also lives on my plant shelf here because I like to keep tabs on it. So let me wipe it off with my sweater. Good thing I don't wear a white sweater today. Okay. Cute. We'll see. Hopefully it grows in now.
Last up is my crown of thorns. I actually really like this planter for this plant, um, but it just is not big enough to hold enough moisture. It does have a drainage hole in the bottom. So I'm gonna move it into this one because, I don't know, this one just holds moisture really well because it's so thick. So <clears throat> I did try putting these white pebbles up top to help hold moisture in and it just wasn't enough. It didn't hold it in enough. This is quiet, like for this being a, another succulent plant, this is a, quite a thirsty one. And that's the thing, this is a Euphorbia milii and Euphorbia, I am finding out are a lot thirstier than you would expect, especially when they get enough sunlight, which this one clearly does. It has a lot of little blooms up here. Well, okay, actually, guess what? These actually aren't the blooms. <laughs> They're bracts. Um, and the bloom is inside of these, which that's so crazy. Oh my gosh, yeah. Who knew? I've been calling them blooms my whole planty YouTube career. <laughs> and I've been wrong that whole time, but I'm probably gonna continue calling them blooms because that's what they look like. Any opposed? <laughs> well, even if you're opposed, I'm still gonna do it. trying to get all these pebbles off because I do want to reuse them. All right, this one's going to be a little hard to pull out because it is so pokey, but I'm just going to raw dog it. Ow! Actually, that's a lie. I'm going to use this paper towel over here. <laughs> wow! Those roots look cool. I am gonna tussle them a little bit. Just like a few little pinches. It's not as root bound as that other one, so I don't feel like I need to really mash it up like I did that other one, but yeah, a little bit is good, I feel like I do. I really do. Actually, I think I like the, no, I don't. I like the matcha thing. Since there is a drainage hole in this planter, I'm going to not put the horticultural charcoal. Oh, why am I filling it all the way up? <laughs> I filled it up to about there. This is one pokey little freaking plant. Maybe I need to remove a little more substrate. Yeah, I, I lied, I am gonna break it up a little more. But it's fine. It's fine, a little stress is good for us. It makes us stronger. Us and plants. A little stress, not too much stress. I am pretty sure the shoulder thing is from stress because I'm also having a tension headache behind this eye. And I was reading online to see like what I could do for it. And it said that tension headaches can also lead to shoulder aches and pains, which I am definitely having. So that's probably what it is. I am very stressed out. Don't know why I have such a good life, but I'm still freaking stressed out. What is going on? What is going on? God, I love plant care. It's just so cathartic, you know? I just zone out. <laughs> This is totally off topic really quick, but I'm going on a trip to Vegas with one of our couple friends and then also my sister and her boyfriend who will soon be her fiance. Would you guys like to see a vlog of that? Like, I don't know, I don't know. I wanna post stuff that you guys actually care to watch. Let me know if you'd like to see the Vegas vlog. We are flying Spirit Airlines because the flights were only $30 round trip. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Okay, and now that I have this back filled in, 
I'm gonna add the pebbles that we took out of this planter. Oh yeah, this planter. That is so cute. The pebbles on top of this, even though it's just like this much, really, really helps to hold moisture in. It just stops it from, what's the word? Evaporating out from, especially if you have a plant in high light, like I have this plant. So that is why I like it, but it also kind of tops it off really nice. Like it just makes it look so crisp and clean. And honestly, kind of like I like, kind of like I have my life together because, <laughs> because I have time to put pebbles. It just really finishes it off so nicely. So I love doing that. I don't do it on every plant though because it gets expensive and it also makes them really heavy. But yeah, there is the Euphorbia milii or crown of thorns. I think it looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and put these all back in their homes and then we'll go ahead and water them. I do wanna show you where all of these live so you can have a little bit of an idea of what's going on in their day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> okay, let's go. This is our kids' bathroom, or like, I don't know, our main bathroom that when people come over, this is the bathroom they use. Anyway, this is where this is going to live. The planter barely fits in this little saucer, which this is another one of those crystal ones that somebody gave us at our wedding. I do not remember who it was, although I wish I did. Um, and then also on this windowsill lives my Ripsalis, which the more I look at this, the more it grows on me. I actually really like this plant planted directly into the saucer. I think it looks pretty cool. And if it grows in well, I will definitely leave it in here until this is a root ball all on its own. So I think it looks pretty cool though. Then I'm gonna water this. Next, moving to my very messy bedroom. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> this is like the last room in my house I clean because, I don't know, there's much important spaces to keep clean. I literally only sleep in here, so. On my dresser, let me turn on this light, lives this Syndapsis Silver Hero. So I'm gonna water it. Turn it around so you can see a little better again. <laughs> okay, I think that was enough. Maybe a little bit through the front too. Oh yeah, it's holding a lot of water, which I love to see. It's exactly what I want. I want it to be super, super wet. And also in this room, just on the other side of this philodendron rugosum here, let me move the light so that you'll be able to see a little bit better. This is where the Thanksgiving cactus also lives, or handsock. Um, normally I keep it, Maybe we need to move it now that it needs a little more space. Okay. I normally keep it like this, but I think I'm gonna turn it this way so that, I hope you can even see what I'm doing. Might be off screen. Oh no, that's perfect. Um, I'm gonna turn it so that the bald side is toward the light so that it can start to grow a little more evenly this way. And again, another little crystal saucer to put underneath the drainage hole. On 
until it drains out the bottom. Even though the light doesn't look amazing right there, it would look so much better without it. The plants love it, they need it, so hey, we do what we could do, right? Uh, and then you saw the agave lives here and the avocado plant lives here. So I'm gonna water this one in the sink because, yeah, this one gets a little bit messy <laughs> where, how the leaves are, I don't know. So I just like to water this plant in the sink. I always have and I probably always will. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Now it's watered. I had these lights off for the video because it's a little bit of an eyesore. I'm gonna put some wood planks here to help hide the grow lights. But yeah, this is how they live. I think they're doing okay. Most of the plants here really seem to love this shelf situation. Um, I accidentally wasn't recording when I poured all that soil in, but this is my secondhand soil bin. Any substrate I unpot from a plant, I just throw it in here and it just sits in my cold, dark basement for like a year until I end up reusing it. I don't know if I started it in time for you to hear that thunder, but we are about to get another storm. It's been the strangest weather lately, but wow, the mountains look magical. Oh, this storm is moving quick. That is some big frickin' hail. Holy shit, it looks like perlite. It looks like freaking perlite. What the heck? That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I repotted some plants.